In my continuing quest to delve deep into the shadowy corners of politics, searching for dirty secrets and ugly truths to expose, I am often asked, well, Mr. Smarty Pants, what qualifies you to go snooping around like some amateur detective? Well, besides my sworn superhero duty to defend freedom and justice, I was inspired from a very young age by one of the most brilliant mystery-solving characters known to Western literature. With his near-psychic powers of deduction, he has solved the most puzzling cases and has foiled the most sinister of villains. And I'm speaking, of course, of the great Scooby-Doo. Bet you thought I was going to say Sherlock. Nope. Anyway... <laughs> By studying the many adventures of this super sleuth, along with his crime-fighting posse, Fred, Daphne, Velma, and Shaggy, I learned how to look at things with a critical eye, and to identify the hidden clues, and to fearlessly follow the trail of evidence wherever it may lead. Although, while watching Scooby-Doo Mysteries, I began to notice certain anomalies about the show itself. For instance, I know it was the sexy little Velma who was the real brains behind the operation, while Fred and Daphne would always scurry off for possible romantic encounters, and Shaggy and Scooby were really only interested in searching for food, leading me to wonder how much pot these guys were smoking. <laughs> but you can't deny Scooby and Shaggy's incredible ability to search for things, considering how they would go into haunted houses, left deserted for years, and ma still manage to find enough fresh bread, deli meat, and cheese to make those huge Dagwood sandwiches to snack on. I mean, lucky those haunted houses keep a fully stocked refrigerator. Um, yet my biggest problem with the Scooby gang is out of the dozens of ghosts they have encountered, it always turns out to be a bad guy in disguise or using smoke and mirrors to scare off Snoopy investigators. Yet every time they see another glowing specter, they yell, A g -g -g ghost and start running. <laughs> I mean, does it never occur to them that maybe this ghost is fake just like the like all of the previous ones that they've they've encountered, I don't think they've ever actually found a real ghost. In fact, watching Scooby-Doo has convinced me that ghosts don't really exist, but are only hoaxes protecting some money counterfeiting operation or real estate swindle or other criminal plot. And with that in mind, I present to you the Scooby-Doo episode that I've always wanted to see. Scooby-Doo investigates 9-11. <laughs> Where are you? We got some work to do now. Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? We need some help from you now. It's a dark and stormy night in late September 2001 as the mystery machine pulls up to the Pentagon to investigate the crash of a Boeing 757. As the gang reaches the scene, Shaggy spots the obvious. Zoiks! Like, where did all the plane wreckage go? Where are the wings or the tail or the engines? I mean, any other crash site's got tons of debris lying around. It's all missing. Where'd it go? Velma explains. According to the officials, the huge jet fuel fireball vaporized the plane on impact. Daphne questions further. But jet fuel can't reach temperatures hot enough to melt titanium engines, much less vaporize them and the government officials say they identified the passengers by their DNA. Like, what kind of fireball vaporizes titanium, but leaves human DNA intact for identification? Fred takes charge. There's something fishy here, gang. Let's split up and search for clues. As Shaggy and Scooby make a beeline to the nearest pizza shop, and Fred and Daphne hop into the back of the van, Velma talks to Condoleezza Rice. Thanks for talking to me, Condi. No problem, Velma. We've got nothing to hide. Great. Well, can you tell me, did the jet impact damage any valuable Pentagon offices? Well, yes, the crash destroyed the new Navy Command Center. Wasn't that the office that was investigating the $2.3 trillion in missing Pentagon funds? Well, yes, but uh, we never had any idea that an airliner could be used as a weapon. But in October of 2000, the Pentagon conducted a mass scale training drill that simulated a Boeing 757 crashing into the very same spot the real plane hit. Navy pilot Charles Burlingame participated in the drill and then took a job at American Airlines. Isn't it bizarre that he was the pilot of the very hijacked flight that hit the Pentagon? Well, that's all the time I have for questions. Goodbye. Meanwhile, Shaggy and Scooby snoop around the crash site and are chased by a glowing figure of Osama bin Laden. Zoinks! It's a t t, -t terrorist Run, Scooby! <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha!
After some comic action, Scooby manages to catch Osama in a cargo net as the rest of the gang shows up. Good work, Scoob. You caught Bin Laden. But is he really an Islamic radical? Velma pulls off Osama's mask to reveal... It's, it's Dick, Dick Cheney. Cheney! Velma fills in the blanks. He had planned an oil war in the Middle East, but needed an excuse to start it. He had motive, connections, and opportunity to be completely complicit in this attack, and then cover up the crime. And I would have gotten away with it if it weren't for you meddling kids. Zoinks! Like we totally found the real spook! A CIA spook! <laughs> <laughs> oh, we do, we do.